This episode of the Slipcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast to order, veteran owned coffee company. They are a world class, hand roasted micro batch coffee, which means that your coffee is freshly roasted after you ordered. Uh, you can check out all the great, they have all sorts of coffee beans from different places that, such as Colombia, Brazil, Honduras, Peru and other far-off lands. Coffee available in K-Cup, gift cards available, and free shipping, over $50. You can check out more of, more about them and the coffees that they have over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. Uh, and just as a, a quick reminder, uh, this is our second-to-last Iron Bean Coffee read. If you are interested in sponsoring advertising on the Buckeye Sloopcast, just uh, hit me up at sloopcast at gmail.com, sloopcast at gmail.com. All right, Kyle, this is our super secret section of the show, but I, I, I don't even want to, I don't even want to do it. I don't even want to do it. Uh, we have a lot to talk about today. We got football, Kyle. We got football. It is uh, this is a sloop camp episode, and uh, I just, let's just go. Let's just do it. All right. You know, <laughs> Gangland says, "Yeah, f you, YouTube viewers." Here's the thing. I one of the things like YouTube, you have to get right to the point. If you're not getting right to the point, then da, 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 that's the advice that people give. And good lord, if that's what you're supposed to do, we are failing. We've got Burpee back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? I don't have any complaints, I don't think. I'm I'm You don't think. I'm well, you know, I I'm tired. I like personal life, real life, professional life stuff, not not important pertaining to any of this, but I'm very, very tired right now. So it's a, uh, what, what are you going to do? Kyle, don't ask follow-ups <laughs> when I say I can't complain. You should just don't ask follow-ups. It'll just send me, it'll just, we're wasting time. All right. Uh, I need you to Jared, care you want, a little want... bit less about me as a person, I guess is what I'm trying to say, at least while the microphone's on. Hey, hey Jared, you want to share your screen to so our... What? So people can see us here? Yes. Oh, apparently yes, I did. Jared. Okay. I started the recording at the very least, and I did start the virtual camera. Uh, so that's good. And uh, there. Hi, everyone. Uh, now the Discord people can see us. I, I for, You know, I turned on the virtual camera. I forgot to actually you know, enable it in the discord server. Hey, discord. Okay. God, Kyle, like, okay, let's, let's just do this. Let's get right to it. And here, here we still are. All right, Kyle. Uh, we have a few quotes from Ryan day. Do we want to start there? Do we want to maybe just go right into ask Sloopcast questions? How, how you feeling? How, how you, how you want to do this? Oh, by the way, this is our offensive preview episode is we're doing a, a preview of the Ohio state offense. Um, a week or so, well, I guess technically two weeks because of the first two before spring, yada, yada, of actual spring practice. We're, we're, uh, a week in. So, uh, how, how you feeling? Where do you want to start, buddy? Oh, let's, let's go with, um, Ryan Day's, some um, quotes here. Let, I want to only hear from, from coach day, what he has to say so far. All right. Uh, these are, again, this is an offensive preview. So here's, here's just a few of his quotes um, in regards to the offense. Uh, he was asked, uh, essentially, are you, are you going to go into any five wide receiver sets, four wide receiver sets with a running back? You know, what, you know, do, do you, because of all the wide receivers you have, do you foresee? And he basically says, uh, we have, uh, we have to have tight ends for sure. Uh, Day says the Buckeyes always want to have one tight end in the game, if not two. Day says playing without a tight end, quote, limits what you can do when running the ball. These quotes, by the way, I pulled from the 11 Warriors site. Just want to credit them. 
Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. With Ruckert gone, this um, this this off season here, it's good. It's going to come down to who's who's going to make the who's going to make the the jump here, or how many how many tight ends will Ohio State have? Um, uh, Rossi's will be back. Um, we've talked a lot about Scott. I um, mentioned about Royer too. How much of the tight ends will Ohio State really play this year compared to the past few years with um, Ruckert? Well, according to Ryan Day, um, at least one per play. <laughs> that according to Ryan Day. Um, well, Stover, yeah, I, I, listen, I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. That's, there's the God honest truth of it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think Stover knows. I know what Stover wants. Stover wants to be on the defensive side of the ball, but Stover also wants to play. Um, and that's not, uh, I just, as, as I heard myself say that, that, that is not me saying he's not capable. He's not talented enough to play on the defense. That is not what I'm saying. I, I think there's a lot of room at linebacker right now. Um, and he could move his way into the linebacker spot, but there also are, at least in the form of traditional linebackers, only two spots open. You have the bandit position, which he's not a bandit and the bandit. Let's, let's just. Let's just say it's the bullet for right now. I, I don't feel like getting into the semantic defense, uh, the semantic differences in, in the bullet versus the bandit or what. I, it's not important to me at the moment. It's mm -hmm. essentially the same thing. G yeah. Scott will be number one receiving tight end. Yeah, I think so. So like, for example, if you're in a tight, if you're in a situation that's like a third and long, the tight end that's going to be on the field is probably going to be G Scott. If you're in a situation in which it's third and inches, it's probably not going to be G Scott. Uh, so yeah, exactly. Stuart. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, it's, it's, his name's escaping me and this would be a great situation to have Austin in the chat, which he is not currently. Um, yeah. But so we do, uh, what, we was the, a... what was the tight ends name from Florida? Not last year or year prior. Um, I, I can't think of his name, but, he was basically a wide receiver playing tight end. Um, Pitta. Thank you, Stuart or Pitts. Pitts. Yeah. Uh, you know, those, the, those spell checks will always get you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Pitts. G Scott could absolutely be that guy. But, you know, they well, also we, have we, Bennett. I, I'm hearing great things about Bennett Christian already. He's a true freshman. Um, but that's neither here nor there uh he, mm -hmm. you know you're not going to see him start but you could definitely see him getting uh snaps this year but yeah mitch rossi's probably playing more the fullback style tight end um you might see joe royer playing more the blocking style tight end yeah uh but guy zach asks um I'll just kind of throw in these questions as we go down through here. Uh, Buckeye Zek asks, what sort of sets will we see with the tight ends? I would say mainly like one tight end it would be mm -hmm. my, would be my guess. Um, because even if you're in a situation in which you need to run the ball, having a three, having a three wide receiver set is still beneficial because it potentially takes a safety or a linebacker out of the box. Right. So that person's effectively blocked at that point. Why was Jared blaming my phone? I, you know, the fact that I shared my camera should have no bearing on your, on the audio performance of what was happening. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I disagree. I, Gangling asks who will start at tight end against Notre Dame start start is such a weird thing we put a lot of emphasis on starting and i get it and i understand why um, it should be it's, but it's, it should be who who gets the I, most no, snaps I, yeah no gangland gangland i totally get what you're saying i do i i understand um you know who who has it on the first drive i get what you mean by starting i just don't know if that's the correct emphasis i mean to, to, to draw a comparison to basketball this year, you know, Kyle Young, when he was healthy, wasn't starting. Zed Key was starting, 
But who ended up having more minutes in most of those games? Kyle Young. That to me is more important. Um, so I don't know. Like I, it, to me, the tight ends feel very situational. Uh, we, you know, we saw a lot of situations in which um, Ruckert was not on the line, not like next to the offensive lineman. Like he would be split out into the slot. And in those situations, you know, expect it to be G Scott. It's, I think it's just very situational with the tight ends. Uh, Ohio State does not have a do-it-all tight end right now, which, by the way, is fine. Like, <laughs> tight end by committee is not the worst thing that could happen to an offense that's insanely already OP right now. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. I think there was another question. Uh, Buckeye Zach, how many tight ends or excuse me, how many touchdowns will G Scott catch this season? And he put the over under at three and a half over 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 three and a half over. Yeah. You know, I'm curious. I'm curious. How many did um, record have last year? Every year. Every year. How many, how many did he had? So, do, 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 do. You're going to have to talk, Jared, because I got, I'm still trying look to look it up, here. Look it up, Kyle. Look it up. Clap, clap. <laughs> I can't actually do the clap, clap because I have the noise gate up now. It takes the claps out. Um, while Kyle's so looking. This last, this year, Jared, the 2021, he had three touchdowns. Two against Indiana and one against Rutgers. What about year prior to that? Of course, year prior to that, they only played what seven games. So that's that's a hard. That's don't worry about don't worry about the twenty twenty season. It's 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 a statistical outlier. I'm not worried about it. Yep, twenty twenty actually twenty twenty he had most touchdowns. He had five, <laughs> and then twenty nineteen he had four. So I mean, at three and a half, I'm still going over. G Scott is just. A, G Scott's a better wide receiver than, than even Jeremy Ruckert is. Jeremy Ruckert dropped a lot of balls last year. Let's be honest. How many touchdowns for Rossi? Um, one. One and a half is the over under I'd set. And I'd probably go under. <laughs> yeah, same here. But but it same could here. be two. It legitimately could be two. The but the I think the over under is absolutely at one and a half. Mm -hmm. Well, I think. Uh, let's see. Do you have any other tight um, end Nomad. questions? Okay. No, Nomad here said, is Rossi a fullback or tied? And then also, yes. add in, is this year of the fullback? <laughs> it's it's the same. It's There are no fullbacks anymore. Now, you'll have a tight end playing in a fullback position, but go, 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 go to, hold on, ohiostatebuckeyes.com slash sports slash m dash Foot BL slash roster. Yes, I already had it up. There's no fullback. Sort by position. There, there's no, there's no fullback here. There are long snappers. There are punters. There are tight ends. There's no fullbacks here. Uh, how many fullback carries? Zero. There are no fullbacks. It is not a thing. It's a tight end. It's a tight end who will maybe sometimes line up in the backfield. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? All right, Jared. All right. Let's move on to the next um, comment here from, from Coach Day. Talks about on the offensive line. Uh, Day says that Justin Fry is a tremendous teacher and technician. Uh, he goes on, says that the offensive line is in a decent place. He also says there's some guys in there that could change that could challenge for starting positions. So that will be exciting to watch. That's nice. Um, I, I think it's, I, I think the offensive line is almost set. I'm curious on what he meant by day. I'm afraid um, Stuart. I'm afraid of what horses. he means by, by decent place in terms of the offensive line and where they're at. 
I, if I were to venture a guess, I would guess that that means that he likes what they have as far as starters goes, but pray to God no one gets injured. Because I think that's about where they are with the offensive line right now. Mm-hmm. I think they have a I think they have a great backup at guard because I I think you know you have Matthew Jones or Enoch Vamahi either of whom could be the starting guard this year and could also you know and, and then whoever loses that guard position will be the backup guard right um, Fry will have everyone ready they're good everywhere. They're, I think they have a great start. I think they have a, a. I think they have six good offensive linemen. I think they have, and again, by Ohio. When I say great versus good, I'm talking like by Ohio State standards, right? So, no disrespect to everyone or to anyone. <laughs> I think they have two offensive linemen who are currently great. I think they have two offensive linemen who could potentially be great this year. Yeah, I know, and I know then we, they we talked a little. We talked a and then they bit have about, the guard. About then they have the few, open guard few, position weeks ago. Yeah, um, Zen is getting a lot of hype. Yeah, and listen, if Zen Mikowski wins the starting job, great, great for him. I'm happy for him. I don't see it though. I, I do not see it. Um, he might work himself into. It might work himself into the too deep. Um, but even then I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit suspect. Mikowski, you don't think it's Mikowski? How would, how, how do you say it? I'm normally good with those Polish names, my man. And I couldn't, now that being said, I'm still me. So I, I still could (laughs) be messing it up. Doing us probably are. Listen to you. I don't think it's the right. Uh, listen, did you hear it? No, I, I heard nothing. The hell are you talking about? Michael Ski? Is it Michael Ski? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> what on earth are you talking about, Stuart? Oh, my God. <laughs> Stuart's I, I, playing I mind games with me right I, now. I, I he's think this winning. Is a good time. And I he's winning. A good time for an, for an ad break, Jared. <laughs> All right, more more on the more on the offensive line when we come back. Uh, but first, but first, we need to talk about the best coffee. Ah, uh, Stuart or Gangland, that would have been a great intro. Stuart does need some coffee, and <laughs> Stuart can buy his very own coffee at a veteran-owned coffee establishment based out of Ohio. Um, he says, send him a sampler. Listen, I'm not buying you any coffee. That That's not happening. But uh, let's see. Let's see if we have. Let me. I need to make this a widescreen to check this out. Um, you know, I'm not even seeing the thing for the shebang. So I don't. I'm going to venture a guess and say that the shebang is not currently in stock. The whole shebang that is. Um, if you're looking for some K-Cups, those are currently suffering a bit too at the moment. The Rage K-Cups and the Ride or Die K-Cups are sold out, but the Fierce K-Cups are still available, so don't you worry about that. Now, that being said, uh, if, you're, if we're looking at, like, your standard coffee bags, those seem to be in good order right now. Your Rocco, your Dark Rocco, your Loki, your Odin, your Thor, your Fear No Evil, your Unicorn, the Drink from the Skull of Your Enemy, the Cast Iron, which is one of my favorites. The Integrity is uh, currently on sale. Uh, the Ride or Die, the Rage Against the Dying of the Light, and the Fierce are all in stock. Um, if we take a venture over into the flavored coffees, it looks like we're staying pretty well in stock over here, too. Kyle, is the supply chain getting better? I hope so. I hope Me so. Me too. Uh, so, yeah, it looks it looks like at the very least that the good people over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company um, are, are, are keeping up with their, you know, and here's the thing. A lot of these coffees are like single origin coffee beans. So it's not like, oh, I can't get coffee from that farmer right now. Let me just go to the other. No, it's a single origin coffee bean. You know, 
when you're ethically sourcing your coffee beans, which is a thing that the people at the Iron Bean Coffee Company do, you can run into these issues, right? Because you can't just go and get new beans from the lowest bidder. You, you're having to actually work with farms who treat their employees well and, and everything else. So it's, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I can't speak for Dylan over the Iron Bean Coffee Company right now, but um, I might venture to say that he might say something. And this is me guessing. Uh, thank you for your patience uh, while we, while they attempt to keep things in stock, but the, you know, the state of the world is what the state of the world is right now. And uh, your patience is appreciated. So with all that being said, uh, that is our Iron Bean Coffee ad read. Uh, you can find more coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roasters. All right. Moving on here. Coach Day on the wide receivers and <laughs> no kidding, on Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, Coach Day says there's a lot of expectations on Kyle. Um, I wanted Marvin Harrison Jr. because of his. I father. promised, Kyle. I promised. I promised the listeners we'd do more offensive line talk on the other side of the ad break. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I did. Uh, I, I said I said that the offensive line was basically all but shored away, and I, I think that there's a guard position open that I think Matthew Jones is going to get, but could go to Emok. Vama Enoch Vamahi um, left guard right guard not sure but uh, Luke Whipler is Jones definitely has it gangland says we'll see um, he was he was first off the bench last year but it's it's a it's a new year um, but I, I agree with you that I, I I I'm really just trying to say I I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm probably 90% sure it's Matthew Jones's spot. Uh, Whipler's your center. Uh, let's say Matthew Jones is one of your guards, but again, it might be Vamahi. Donovan Jackson will be your other guard. I think Donovan Jackson will be left guard, but I could be wrong. Like I, that that's me venturing a guess because I think they're going to want him starting at left tackle next year, uh, but I but I don't know. Um, Paris Johnson Jr. will be left tackle this year. Dwan Jones will be right tackle this year. So, again, just like there's a there's a little bit of a chance Matthew Jones might not be the other starting guard, but it, to me, I, I think that's probably even a little bit of a chance. But it, but I think again to go back to Ryan Day's thing, where he says they're decent at offensive line. If you go past. Any of the names I just mentioned, there's just a lot of guys who are, to this point, at the very least, unproven. They're just very unproven. They're, there's a bunch of young, really nice talent here, but it's just, it's very untested at the moment. I'm, I'm good now. All right. <laughs> Just making sure. Uh, Dale Mar Mar Marvin Harrison Jr. said there's a lot of ex expectations because of his father, but, but that he's kind of going to do his own thing. Goes on to say his skill and discipline is off the charts. And, and yeah, we, we've, we started seeing that at the last, last game, um, actually earlier, earlier this year. And, you know, Cares on how much of the field he's going to see this year, and because I mean, like last year, that's the stacked wide receiver group here. But yeah, I'm really excited to see what he's going to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've we've talked for twenty twenty five minutes now um, about the offense. You know, we talked about the tight ends and we talked about the offensive line. We haven't even mentioned the wide receivers yet, and it's. The Ohio State's about to lose two first round wide receivers to the draft, and they are somehow more stacked this year than than they were. <laughs> it's 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 insane. Yeah, especially if Cameron Bob can stay healthy. And I've heard good things about him. Like he's yeah. he's looking pretty good this this spring, which I'm I'm really excited for. I really hope he stays healthy. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, Mecca Buka, I think, is your slot wide receiver, period, done, over with. Um, I, I think Julian Fleming, excuse me, no, I did not just say that. Um, I, <laughs> uh, what I meant to say, Mecca Buka would be your slot wide receiver done and over with if they are entertaining moving, moving Jackson Smith and Njimba to the outside. I don't. I've not heard that they're going to do that yet, but you see that a lot at Ohio State or, I mean, anywhere really, where, I mean, it's 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 pretty common practice to, like, start the wide receiver at the slot, and then once the other guys above him graduate, they bump out to one of the outside spots. We We saw both of the previous starting wide receivers do that exact thing. Um, that being said, it, it, there, there's also like a, Hey, if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I don't know, Kyle, three starting wide receivers. If we assume Ninjimba is in the slot, I think it's Fleming Ninjimba and, and probably, Probably still a Mecca, but just not in the slot. Yeah, it's it, it's that's tough. It's tough just because I mean you, you saw what you saw what Harrison did <laughs> against Utah in a in a pretty good Utah defense. And it very well. well could be Harrison. Um I I I, I wanna say it's Stewart. Jason Fleming Fleming and Harrison. I and here's the thing. Again, like we put a lot of emphasis on starting. I think it'll be both of them, right? I mean, it'll it'll be both of them. I I, I feel very confident in saying that. Like, I I think you see a lot of we did, we've not seen in the um in the current era of wide receivers at Ohio State under the previous coach. Uh, a lot of wide receiver rotation mm -hmm. in heart in the heartline era of wide receivers. We've not seen a deep rotation at wide receiver. I wonder if that's different now. You're there's so much hype around Jaden Ballard right now. There's so much hype around Marvin Harrison right now. And then of course, Emeka Buka, and then of course, Julian Fleming, Cameron Bob is is right there. And by the way, I haven't mentioned any of the freshmen yet. Yeah. There's insane freshmen coming onto this team. Grays and Burton, uh, among others. And it's just... <laughs> Gangland says, you'll see the freshmen just in the second half. I mean, <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I mean, you, I, you, I still, don't... you still you still got um you still got Bob out there too if he stays healthy. Can't forget can't forget about him as well. I I don't I just don't think you see a ton of the freshmen even because even if you go and you like try and give some extra reps to the second line guys. I don't want to call them second string. They're the second line of wide receivers. Hey mm -hmm. hey Austin. Even if you give reps to the second line of of wide receivers, like you still need to get those guys reps. And that to me is still the the priority over getting the freshmen in. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you buy a new PC? Nice. Nice. All right. Uh let me see if there the was offense. any questions. Let me see if there's any questions here. Uh Buckeye Esquire. Most yards, most receptions, and most TDs for the wide receiver room. Uh, JSN, JSN, Marvin Harrison Jr. All right, and then and then uh, am, I, was... am, oh, am I wrong? You're not. <laughs> um, Austin says uh, that that's his take. That Austin won't actually tell me that I'm right because that that's Austin. <laughs> Um, uh, but Gangland, said, Gangland, I asked, am I wrong? And Gangland said, yes. Nomad asks, is 
Marvin Harrison Jr., the breakout wide receiver for this spring. Would he be? Would he be the breakout player? I, he's, honestly, he's done broke, honestly, isn't he? Hon- honestly, from the things I've been reading and all that, the breakout, maybe it's Bob. If he I think it's Ballard. Stay healthy. I, I think yeah, it's ba- Ballard. Ballard's a good one, too, yeah. I just, I, Marvin Harrison Jr. is done already broke. Like he, he had a breakout game. It was, it's called the Rose bowl. Like yeah. that's, I don't, he can't break. He's already broke. Well, I, I Austin says, um, Marvin Harrison Jr. would be a breakout player in any offense in the country that uh, doesn't have JSN to me. Like, I, I guess maybe we're defining what a break, we might be defining what like breakout means. Um, to me, it's like, we know who all of these players are because we're a bunch of nerds and we listen and create podcasts about Ohio State football. But like your mom doesn't know who Jaden Ballard is. Probably. I don't know your mom, but most moms don't know who Jaden Ballard is. <laughs> Hi, gangland. Um, I guess that's my point. Like, if mom watched the the Rose Bowl last year, she knows who Marvin Harrison Jr. is. She already knows who JSN is. These players, by my definition, have already broken out. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Kyle, we have not even talked about, like, C.J. Stroud or Travion Henderson, two guys who could potentially win the Heisman this year. We haven't even... And that was a question for Buckeye Zach. Who wins the Heisman this year? JSN, CJ, or Travion? It's it's, uh, it's it's the court it's the quarterback. It's, it'll be the it'll be the trophy. quarterback. It'll be it's, the quarterback it's, trophy. It almost I mean or Jack Sawyer. Um, you know, we'll we'll talk about the defense in the next episode, Gangland. Um wrong defensive yeah, Buckeye Zach got it. <laughs> All right, uh, or let me, let me finish. Some or of the, let me finish. You might need to bump that inside, Buckeye Zach. Yeah. All right, let me finish. Finish some of the um. Uh, the questions there you here. Go. Uh. Could also be my call, but yeah, I'm gonna go. Will, pri- will Pryor see sub- substantial snaps this year? Um. Yes. I think he. I think, I don't know if Evan Pryor, a lot of it will have to do with health because I think he's still behind Mayan Williams in the depth chart. But I also think that Evan Pryor is far more versatile than than Mayan Williams. Um, Evan Pryor would be a much better situational back as far as being like a third down back, a a screen back, as, as Gangland said. Um, yeah, in a in a more spread out offense, Pryor is going to be more valuable to the team than than Mayan Williams is. Problem is, is that Henderson's going to get most of the carries. Period. Um, so getting carries to both the second and third, and like even if they're two A and two B, because like one of them's the backup in this situation and one of them's the backup in that situation, and of course I'm talking about Mayan Williams and Evan Pryor here. Um. Mm-hmm. That's still, there's not a lot of carries that go to those guys if everyone stays healthy. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Who throws more touchdowns in the spring game? McCord or Brown? Um, probably McCord. And I say that, I mean, one, because he's been in the system longer, right? Like that's, that's worth a lot. Let's let's not underplay that. That is worth a lot. But but also, I feel like Brown will split more repetitions like McCord will probably be given a team and and told to go have fun. Right. McCord will be like one of the teams and the other team will be Stroud for a little bit. Then Brown will come in and play for Stroud. Right. I that's. I think that's how that will go. Mm -hmm. If I make an assumption. The entire second half of that game will be each of them with the same offense. Maybe. Um, 
McCord better than that's that's you have no facts to make such a statement, Buckeye Zach. There are no <laughs> facts to make that statement. You have right, no uh, evidence. Buckeye Zach asks, from whom is the player to watch for leading into the spring game? Sorry, I wasn't listening. What'd you say? For whom is the player to watch for leading into the spring game? Player to watch into the spring game. Um from the offensive perspective, especially, I, I think it's I, again. I'm gonna go Jaden Ballard. Like if we're if we're doing the Kenyon Rambo Spring Player of the Year award, the Spring Game MVP brought to you by Kenyon Rambo, um, Jaden Ballard, I I think is the guy who I would say is is that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could also, you could probably say McCord. You could probably say Cameron Bob. Um, and any of the any of the young wide receivers who still feel like they need to make a name for themselves, especially the guys who are like motivated to show in the spring game, in the passing game specifically, it'll be one of those guys. Yep. All right, Jared. I think that's all the questions we have here for the offensive side. Got, got more on the defensive side, but we'll... We'll save that for the next episode. Cool, cool. Um, tonight's ending, uh, Kyle. Do you anything in Kyle's corner? Um, no is an acceptable it? answer. <laughs> what was it that I saw? Another another weekend, another national title for Ohio State. Talked about um, the synchronized swimmers. <laughs> synchronized swimmers. Yeah, dude. <laughs> they. They're maybe the most dominant sports franchise ever. Have, they've won like half of their national titles over the past several decades or something like that. It's insane. Not just that, but they got first place in, and I'm just reading this here, first place in team, solo, duet, and trio categories. I'm going to guess that's really good. I, 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 don't, <laughs> I don't know what any of that means, but congratulations. <laughs> I mean, just not even congratulations for winning this year, but just being one of the most dominant athletic programs to ever exist. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, Kyle? Um, no, that I think that said, I think the crew was no, I think the crew had, had the had week off we, this week. week off. Yep. And then USA is currently playing as we're reporting here in their they're up a lot on Panama, so. There you go. Yeah, U- U.S. men did tie Mexico in Mexico, so take the point there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You take the tie when it's in Mexico, for sure. hmm yep. Anything well, that's else? It. That's it. You probably should have saved at least one of those for the next episode. Yeah, I'll find something else. Okay. <laughs> Tonight's ending music will be brought to you by Playing to Vapors. The name of this song is Ghost Hunter. What does incoming boom mean? Don't do that to me as I'm about to wrap up the podcast. That's how you tonight's blending music will be playing to vapors. Uh, the name of the song is ghost hunter. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is playing to vapors. (laughs) 